We're now going to have a look at how to create some sections in this project. Uh, we're going to use our section tool and again I've already got some other sections here so I'm going to have a little bit of issues with just trying to use the right numbers the way that I'd normally do it. So when I'm going to place this one I don't want it to be number six. I'll call this one S1 just to keep it different from the others. Just like elevations, we can see that we've got different ranges. Infinite, limited, uh, and this one's special to our section marker, which is zero depth. What this means, infinite, like elevation, we can see our entire project. Limited, we can choose to show only a partial range. And then zero depth means we're going to see what we're cutting through, but nothing in elevation. Depending on what we're trying to show, trying to create in our elevation, uh, we'll choose these. Infinite, if it's a fairly simple project, that might be the best option. If it's a very, very complicated project, zero depth is maybe the best option. If it's somewhere in between, normally I'll use limited. And I'll use that in this case just to show you how it works. The marker, unlike the elevation, we have, or we can choose to have two points. Uh, this could again be dog-legged, two arrows. Uh, whereas the elevation had one central marker head. I can make the line segmented or continuous. I can choose to have the marker with one head in the middle, but I definitely would choose both ends. Otherwise, it's generally going to be in the middle of your floor plan. Let's go down to model display. Uh, similar to the last one, but in this case, with a different intention for a section where we're mostly showing things that we're cutting. And so for the things that I cut, I'm going to choose to represent it as a cut fill. And the uncut elements, in this case I want to be uniform pen color because I don't want to give a lot of attention to what's not being cut, again because it's only an, um, a section on elevation. And I'm not going to be using any sun shadows because it's a section. Internally, that doesn't look really good. Externally, sh sun shadows are great. And in a, a later video, I'm going to show you how we can create great sun shadows in our elevation tool. So in a complicated project, where do we cut sections? The simple answer is wherever you want to. The complicated answer is as many times as we need to to show every instance. So a section is maybe just fulfilling a requirement for council or for a design project. Uh, but in terms of a real world application for construction, the builder is using the information that they see in the section to be able to build the building. So every time uh, the building changes, has a different level, has a different roof structure, has, has a different construction type, we need to show another section. So let's show one cutting through the middle of this and in this case, I'm going to choose to go through the bridge, not through the void. Cutting through the stairs can be useful, but it can also be very, very confusing. So we have to pick and choose how we're going to show that. And just like with the elevation, I have to choose which way I'm going to look. In this case, I'm going to look right. Now, just like with the um, elevation, I want to make sure I'm going through my building. But because my markers are on the outside, I don't want to go too far past my building. And again, this will show on every story. So I want to make sure I can see everything that I want to see. And unlike with the elevation, I'm going to have this on a different set of layer combination. This one's called RMD section. And I want to make sure my boundary wall is visible for this particular type. So this is where we want to see it. Let's open it up and represent it. Uh, what I didn't explain before, we can right click and say open with current view or once we've created it, it will also create access to this in our project map. So that's why using a good ID, a, an ID that you can easily represent and find is important. This one's called S1 and of course what I'd need to do is go through and change the section number. I'm just not worried about that at the moment. So let's double click this to open this time. You'll see that straight away it looks a little bit different because it's black and white instead of in color. Again, that's 
not something that Archicad's necessarily going to do by itself. That's just how I want to represent it. Again, in a conceptual drawing, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. I'm trying not to overcomplicate the drawing. And my terrain, in this case, I turned it off in my elevation, but I want to see it in my section. It's helping to hide the things that I don't want to see. And in this instance, it's representing the earth fill, which is a, a fill that I've created because the Archicad fill for the earth isn't very nice. So some things we can see in elevation. This column, we're viewing in elevation, and that's why we can see a rock hatch on it, whereas this wall and this slab we're seeing in section, and that's why it's being represented as solid black. So apart from that, what do we need to do? Sometimes we're, we're going to see what we want. Uh, sometimes there's going to be too much information. At the moment, this model isn't detailed enough in order to be able to represent it exactly the way that I want it to. So if I felt that I was seeing too much information, what I might want to do is to, instead of having this at limited depth, I could change this to zero depth. Now let's have a look at how that represents. We can see that there's now no line that it's connected to. Open this up. And now we're only going to see the elements that we're cutting through. So this does look cleaner if we're trying to again go for a conceptual type of representation. This might be cleaner. But if we have an element that we can't see how it's connected to our building, so in this case we've got a, a trellis, but we don't see how it's joined, it's a little bit disconcerting. So sometimes the zero depth works really well, sometimes it doesn't work so well. So I'm going to turn that back on now and have a look at some more options. Let's go to limited depth. But in this case, instead of having our depth so far, let's grab this line again and make it very, very short. So we're going to keep it very close to its origin. So now this is good because we can now see one of these beams that connects the two trellis members. So that's helping to join it all together. And we can see a little bit of roof in elevation, but we're not seeing enough to really make sense of it. So let's try it again, and we're just going to stretch it out a bit further. So I don't love the idea that what I'm saying is trial and error, uh, but what I'm trying to explain to you is that there's a lot of options within each of the settings to represent it the way we want to. So I've extended this enough now that we're seeing the back wall of a lot of these rooms, and by seeing those back walls we're seeing the, uh, the, the door or the windows, and that's helping us to represent it. But what's awkward and unfortunate here is we're cutting through part of this roof, which, which is a little bit strange. I don't necessarily want to do that. One thing that I can do if I want to accentuate this further going into the settings, model display, just like with the elevation I can also turn on my marked distant area and I can use a uniform, uniform pen color and so now I have two lines. What this means, I have a total limit, so I'll move my total limit a bit further so it's past the ridge line of this roof. And then I have a mark distant error which I'm going to bring very, very short. So it's only going to show a very small amount of error in front of me. And so what that means now is it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to turn on my true line weight, which will hopefully help to represent that a bit more. Is the lines that are much closer to me are going to be black, and all the lines that are a little bit further away are going to be grey. Now, I might need to change my pens, because at the moment the black line is thinner and the grey line is thicker. So if I go into the settings of those, I can change in my pen and colours change the thickness and weights of these lines, but we won't worry about that at the moment. So now we've added that extra level of depth, and so we have solid black representing our structure, 
um, black lines representing the things that are in, in elevation but very close to us, and then grey for things that are a little bit further away but not so far away that we can't see them or don't want to see them. So that's a, a great way of being able to again add depth to our drawings um, by using the settings that are built into ARCHICAD with a little bit of finesse. So that's our section and elevation markers, uh, a, a very general rough representation of those. Uh, I'll do a video later which gets into more detail of how to represent elevations with um, hatching, vectorial hatching, and with shadows.